like to run through agenda items and do our presentations and fill everyone in, but we will not be able to take action on any of the action items. Um, for the board members who are present, thank you for being here, and uh, I will be reaching out to you to schedule another time between now and the end of the year so that we can convene in both. Um, as soon as possible. As soon as this meeting is over, I will be circulating an agenda um, or an email to the board. Yep. Um, oh, I did not officially call the meeting to order. Robert, do you want to do that? Uh, meeting to call to order at 8.31. Okay, so let's um, quickly go around the table and do introductions. My name is Ellen Riado. I am the Executive Director of the Bell Park today. Katie Kiefer, Council District 14, Downtown Field and Public Works Coordinator. Robert Baker, Board Chair. Uh, Paul Keller, Board Member. Zuma Waldemarium, Operations Manager of South Park City. Josh Krieger, Director of Real Estate and Planning, South Park City. Dave yeah. Gordon, Property Owner. Tom. Tom Trout, Resident. Laura Wang, <coughs> Resident at Luma and Liaison for our HOA. <laughs> I'm Paul Jaramillo with the Los Angeles Fashion Walk of Fame. I'm Eduardo Cawan with the Los Angeles Fashion Walk of Fame and Metropolitan Fashion Week and Telemundo. Uh, Eva Bitar, City of Los Angeles Mayor's Office of Film and Television. Jamal Johnson, Safety Operation Manager. Victor Gonzalez, Team Team Manager. Uh, Billy Greer, Resident Property Owner. Please rise Board Member. Wallace Block, a South Park Band Director of Communications and Policy. Okay, um, I'm going to open it up to public comments, announcements. Katie, I know you had a couple of things to mention on behalf of the council office. Yes. And apologies, I cannot stay. I have a couple different meetings this morning. But um, one happy November 1. Uh, really quick, some completed items, ongoing stuff. Uh, stuff that we're preparing for, the downtown team at least is preparing for, for 2019. First, congratulations that my fig is done. Uh, I'm still calling it substantially complete. Uh, it officially hit the two month mark a couple days ago, uh, and I will be uh, connecting with DOT as well as South Park on next steps. What stuff is outstanding, what stuff is working great, what stuff isn't working great. We have lots of other streetscape projects in downtown that we're doing, and we need to learn from this model and make sure that we're correcting things ahead of time and making sure that projects like this go into place and work well for properties, the community, visitors, understanding when they come to downtown that it's changing, it's not just um, various street lanes that you're just driving through. Um, for 2019, one of the things that I have dived into my first six months is really street repaving for downtown, tree trimming, and street infrastructure throughout the throughout downtown. So basically, we've done a comprehensive assessment that we're working with uh, Bureau of Street Services on regarding street paving for all of downtown, uh, just off the top of my head. In South Park, Olive is one of many that needs to be repaved because of the first wave of development completing. Uh, the streets just haven't been maintained in many years. Uh, for tree trimming, thank you uh, South Park Bid for providing uh, a various slew of trees that need to get trimmed for 2019. Um, the most problematic type of tree is obviously ficus. And, uh, yes, <laughs> I am yes, I agree. So we'll be rolling that out, uh, and obviously I will make sure to keep South Park in the loop on how that starts framing up so that you know when this stuff is occurring, not only logistically uh, with access impacts, but also so that you guys are aware and can prepare for that. Um, ongoing uh, is obviously working with specific construction sites uh, and development sites with regards to their pedestrian access, how they connect to the street while they're building their buildings. Um, and then the other quick points are that we are still, uh, the council member still uh, is behind fighting the Mitchell injunction. Um, he is also evaluating with all of the council members regarding bridge home locations throughout the city. Um, El Pueblo, the one in our, uh, in our district, it's officially been, I think almost two months, uh, 
has had a lot of really good success stories uh, in the first two months that we're tracking and learning from because obviously those are good best practices to learn from for future sites. Um, and then obviously I know I won't be here to see the presentation, but uh, we've been working with South Park on the next utility art, uh, like, what do you think, the utility wayfinding project, thank you. Um, and one, it's fabulous. Uh, it's definitely gonna be an example for our office when other community partners wanna come forward and really look at art components for utility boxes, so thank you. Uh, and we are gonna see that project through. Uh, I come to as many board meetings as I can. I'm always available, I live downtown. Um, so I'm here, thank you for the time. And is there any just quick questions or? Uh, I, why sure. are we with the legal vending? We are still doing the framework, but ever since the uh, governor's uh, position came into effect, basically now it's looking at the different options and what what is conflicting, what isn't, um, where do we go from there. Obviously, we will be keeping you in the loop because I know for your property and the immediate surrounding area, um, that was the biggest highlight for AEG. Um, we did, though, recommend specific areas that have high frequencies of entertainment, uh, one of them being uh, the blocks around LA Live, a couple others throughout downtown, uh, where basically, because of the high frequency of events or activities, those should not have specific sidewalk bending options, um, and that's something that we're continuing to push through. So we'll make sure to keep you updated on what changes come about. Um, but so, so far, two months left before something has to happen. I believe yes. so. Yeah. So we're still balancing basically what the governor has given us versus mm -hmm. what we what framework we have and what unravels versus what's available versus where we're at. Okay. I'll just add to that that there's um, CCA has been driving a lot of yeah. the advocacy and for putting forth specific <coughs> requirements for the framework. So it's you know not within five feet of a ramp, not within. Uh, you know, all of these very specific uh, requirements. The other component and sort of the big one that it all rests on is enforcement. So you can have a framework and you can have all of these very complicated and specific rules, but unless you have people that are out there citing, um, it doesn't really do a whole lot. So we're, we and CCA and I know uh, council office is really keeping an eye and pushing, trying to push forward more. Yeah. Thank you. Any other public comments or announcements before we dive into the agenda? Okay, we're gonna skip item number three um, and jump to item four, which is a presentation from Vine. Um, Thomas, hi. Hey guys. Welcome. So Nima um, Daibari is an operations manager with Lime, and I had the pleasure of meeting with him last month. Um, to discuss Lime's <coughs> model and how they are going to be introducing or, or how they have introduced their version to Los Angeles and specific, specifically downtown. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to you, Thomas. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So my name is Thomas Lord, General Manager for Los Angeles for Lime. Um, we are one of the, um, obviously, the electric scooter company, um, but we're really just dock free kind of mobility, mic micro mobility solution. Um, so we started with about a year ago with bikes, um, then we had e-bikes, and then now we have electric scooters as well. Um, and um, pretty soon we're going to be doing transit pods, which are like very small cars. You can park like three or four of them in a state. And the idea is just to generally get people around congested areas um, more efficiently than we do right now, and help the environment by using electric. Like, <coughs> yeah. So just. Uh, Perfect. So this is kind of a breakdown of our vehicle. Um, so the company is about a year and a half old, and in that year and a half, we've expanded to 110 markets. Um, we're the largest uh, dock-free mobility company in the world right now. Um, we just launched Australia and New Zealand, um, so we're on almost every continent right now. Um, markets in the U.S. Europe. Um, the idea, we was founded on the idea that like we <clears throat> use our cars to do inefficient trips. Um, so the two mile trips that most car
cars uh, are caught up doing are just extremely inefficient. They congest the city, they're bad for the environment, and so these are the solutions that we come up with to try to help that. Do you like computer? Um, one of the things that we've done differently than the competition is that we um, have our Latin Access program, which is a way for people that are low income to get reduced uh, fees and or reduced um, charges on um, using a, a vehicle. Um, so anybody that on federal or state aid can apply and be accepted into this program. Kind of a breakdown of how it, how the, uh, the app works. So there's often a um, few questions that people have after seeing like kind of what happened in Santa Monica over the summer and, and how um, you know the, the company is rolled out. Um, the one is vehicle parking. Um, we do a lot of things to try to make sure that the parking is uh, clean and um, you know, the city isn't affected by a bunch of uh, vehicles piled up. Um, one of those things is education that you just saw in the last slide. So user education is a click through understand kind of how it, how it works before you um, start. Um, and uh, the second is our internal operations team. So we have vans that are constantly controlling each neighborhood that we were rolling out in. Um, and those vans are there to immediately, or as quick as we can, respond to a customer complaint that comes through. Um, so something blocking a, you know, uh, pedestrian right away, an ADA pathway, a street, or something like that, um, we can respond rather quickly to move that to your um, data sharing is something that I think is probably one of the coolest things about uh, companies like ours. Um, so we share a lot of our data, we aggregate it and share it with cities. So we can use that data, or city can use that data to inform infrastructure decisions in a way that pretty much no other vehicle or option can do. Um, because we can track these scooters as they're you know, on their routes, and they take routes that you know a car might not be able to take. So you can see you know, if everyone's making a left here, cutting through a park or something like that, you can then realize that there's a lot of traffic in this area and you know, make it safer for people. Um, more on parking. Um, we're <coughs> testing different ways to geofence areas so you can't end a trip there. Um, we do that already in the areas that we're ruled out in, but now we're trying to kind of incentivize people to park in certain areas. Um, so, you know, kind of getting both um, this is parked or not. So when you end a ride with Lime, you have to take a photo of where you parked your scooter. Um, and uh, those photos are then rated by other users to then decide, you know, is this correctly parked, is this not correctly parked? And the, the, our backend system is actually learning, similar to like a CAPTCHA on the website, um, what a like properly parked vehicle will look, would look like. And so eventually it will be instant to um, prevent you from ending your ride if you park somewhere that's irresponsible. <coughs> More on park or not? Sorry, what are the criteria for correctly parked? Yeah, good question. Um, so you want it out of the pedestrian right away? out of ADA, you know, um, compliant area. So away from a door, or away from a red curve, something like that. Um, obviously not in the street, and you want it upright. So that's kind of what it's looking for. It's looking for like blue lines, red lines. Um, so the pedestrian right-of-way technically is the entire sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So what is the criteria for parking? Can you clarify what you mean by out of the Yeah, so we want to have <coughs> furniture though. So like okay. kind of where, you know, uh, trees are, where pole or, I don't know, technically called the like, pole of a baller. Um, want it there so that you're keeping most of the sidewalk open for, you know, for use, um, but you're still, you know, easy to access the vehicle if you want to use it. Well, how do you enforce it? Because I live in a community where <clears throat> I don't believe it's enforced at all. I live in Venice, mm -hmm. and my big concern is that when this is really introduced into downtown, specifically around our property, that they're going to be inundated everywhere. Because yeah. I don't believe that there's really been any enforcement by the city or by Lime or by Bird or by anybody else that's doing it. So I'm, while I support the concept, because yeah. I think whatever is great for the environment and sustainability, I, I just don't believe that there's any way that you can enforce this. I've never seen a vehicle 
in and around my community and I walk my community quite a bit enforcing where they park or picking them up or moving them yeah well we, we do do a lot of patrols in Venice but you're right Venice has been kind of like ground zero for I think probably the worst part of, of the scooter <coughs> like explosion if you will um, because there are no regulations in Los Angeles right now. where Santa Monica kind of quickly informed like came up with ways to, to make all the companies comply with with what they wanted LA has taken a long time to do that um, but we now have the conditional use permit that's coming out soon. Um, everyone's applied for it. We don't, we're not sure when it's gonna, gonna come out, but that conditional use permit um, governs parking, <coughs> governs you know how how much operation time you have to spend like patrolling and things like that. Um, and if you don't comply with that permit, it can be pulled, and then your scooters are essentially illegal and LED would be in a car. What about the ability, I know Bird has what they call their nests. What about the ability for a community or a, a zone to apply for a, a non-nest? <laughs> where where, where yeah. you know, we're not interested in, in being an end site for the scooters to pile up uh, on a trip down to, for instance, LA Live. Yeah, um, it's a good question. So if, if there's a you know, like unique region that for some reason is like that, and businesses that are there decide they don't, for whatever reason they don't want scooters, we can geofence that area and no one will be able to end their trip in that, in that region. So is that an application that that region or area would need to apply it's, for? It's really just kind of um, one off right now. So it would be up to the operations team, but I think it's it's, it's less like, a, if, if the community around there, like if a few businesses approach me and they're like, hey, you know, this is a problem and we want to geofence, I'm not gonna argue with you. Okay. Like that's how, how it works right now. Um, I think we will have a, um, a more formal process for that as we go along. But right now it's kind of like, with the regulations, we're pretty much allowed to do go anywhere on um, where they say. So like the regulations are pretty strict on where we can park and where we can. Um, so that that's one piece, but if the business is around where those places, or where the streets are parked, they're not a good, like, you know, I don't want to, I want to come into a community and be a, like a partner and a benefit, right. and not, not <laughs> the opposite. Yeah. So I mean that that's really like kind of what the point of our community outreach is, is to understand from community groups and bids and chambers of commerce and stuff like that, like what what do the businesses and, and residents in that community really want? And there are some um, I don't know if you have any presentations, but there are some stuff that um, you know might be also a benefit to the to the local businesses. Like we have um, our Lime Hub program, which is um, uh, we can add the business as a place to pick up a helmet. Um, so we give out free helmets to users, and we will like stock the business with free helmets. So it kind of drives customers to that business, and it's also um, if you become part of that program, or if your business becomes part of that program, you get first kind of uh, first ins on our beta test for other things. So eventually, what we want is we want to if you're scootering by somewhere, we want to hit you with a hey, this business is offering fifty percent off right now for you know X, Y, and Z product, and that's kind of like where the Goal is so all those kind of like tests that we're going to try out and things like that that involve local businesses. If you're part of the Lime Hub program, you get you know first first in on trying it out, which I think is really cool. Um, sidewalk riding obviously a problem like um, uh, parking. Um, sidewalk riding is legal in California. Um, we pulled our users in San Francisco, and of those that admitted to riding uh, e-scooters on the sidewalk, it was 74% said it was because they didn't feel safe on the street. Um, and so we think that the best way to handle sidewalk riding is one, education, um, and two, getting better infrastructure so that people feel safe on the street. And we, we partner with the cities that we are in to um, one, provide that data, and two, you know, oftentimes help fundraise or do stuff to improve the infrastructure for scooters and bicycles. A little bit on the data. Um, on our off, um, yeah, we have 24 hour customer service, so if you, were, if you have a problem with the scooter, you can submit a ticket, um, you can text, you can call, you can go online. Um, 
and our SLA is that we will fix that scooter problem within within two hours if we receive a ticket. Um, one thing we can do is in-app messaging. So if there's a big event like um, you know LA Live has you know a million things that go on in LA Live, but if there's something that's going on in LA Live, we can um, prevent scooters from going there um, for you know the, the duration of the. I don't I don't know if LA Live will be a scooter place anyway. It may be something that's geofenced totally, but um, as an example, we can prevent scooters from going there for the length of that event and also ping riders if they go by. Um, you know, this is happening, don't scooter in this area, or this is happening, you should check it out. Um, so we've purchased a bunch of carbon offsets to offset um, the use of our vans, which we use to patrol, and now we are completely um, carbon neutral. So the company is carbon neutral, and the reason that we would have to do that is because we charge, and charge the scooters, which often uses, uh, you know, coal or whatever else generates that electricity, and then also we use gasoline in the van. But um, yeah, so this is a, a great initiative that we've um, started as well. Um, so we think that eventually people will kind of self-organize scooters and bikes. We provide the infrastructure and education the same way that we do with cars. So like cars are basically a dock free mobility solution as well. Um, and we come up with like very good ways to, to organize and regulate cars. Um, and we kind of see the future of that happening with uh, scooters and bikes as well. Um, this is a uh, very grainy picture in Sa of Santa Monica, um, and they have started to use these bike corrals, or not bike corrals, scooter corrals, as uh, locations that are visibly on the physical infrastructure um, for people to park their scooter. Um, and then they're also paired with, in our app and in Bird's app, um, parking pins, preferred parking locations, and eventually like incentives and disincentives to, to return the scooter. Thank you guys very much. Um, most of the time people have a bunch of questions. Um, it's usually just better for me to answer questions than go through a whole presentation, but um, so I took up a bunch of time. Are there any quick quick questions? Yeah. How do we contact you? Um, you guys I can give my email to, um, but a general like member of the public, um, we have uh, our contact information on our website, so they should go through the support at Lyme. Um, or phone number. So when, should I be doing contact with NEMA then to uh, stay on top of what your guys' plans are as soon as you get, you receive information? Yeah, so I think uh, um, Carla is going to okay. be, so NEMA had to fly to Maui to now we're launching Maui, so Nima's doing that. Um, Carla will be Somebody has to do it. I know, it's a <laughs> tough call for us. <laughs> um, right now, all of downtown is geofenced. So LADOT is not sure what we're gonna do with downtown. Um, and so as they figure that out, um, we would absolutely love to work with you guys to be like, all right, this is where we want them, this is where we don't want them. One of the things that, we're, that I'm a little, um, that I would like to be cautious of is, uh, an, in, a, an incident where we receive the conditional use permit and then we wake up and there are 400 scooters in, in, in and around downtown and nobody has any idea what they're supposed to do, what doing with them, or parking them, et cetera. So if there's any way that we can help to expedite the education campaign, sure. um, that's something that I would certainly like to partner with you on um, okay. so that we're not scrambling. I'm sure you're going to want to you know, hit the market as soon as you can. Yeah. Right, so yeah. let's get ahead of that and make sure that we're ready. Yeah. Um, I mean, we would absolutely love to partner with you guys on, on any type of initiative, um, especially education. Got it. Great. Right. Just talk about it. Yeah. Um, how are you operating in Seattle right now? Um, I think Seattle is just bike. Currently. No, it is just bike. Yeah. But I mean, do you have a CBP in Seattle? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I know that we, we worked quite a bit with um, their Department of Transportation and actually their old general manager of the Seattle Department of Transportation just joined line. Um, so I, I think we're, we're okay with them. So. <laughs> yeah. um, what was the conditional use of that? I'm not sure yet. We so they haven't, yet. yeah. So we've all, we're, I can speak for us and a few other operators, but we've applied for it um, and we're in, we're 
trying to get up there from here to here. So no down. estimated at all. Could be the, the, could be the deadline for them to get back to us, uh, a decision is November 15th. Um, so each day that goes by, we're kind of hoping we're going to get it. Um, but even if we were to get that tomorrow, we wouldn't be able to roll off downtown until the uh, LADOT has kind of figured out what they want to do. So, so a few months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we don't know, but um, I'm thinking of a few months. Potentially, yeah. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, Thomas, thanks so much. Cool, yeah, nice thank you guys. You. Um, thanks for being here, and we'll be in touch. All right. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, all right, let's keep trucking on. Yeah, I'll, I can distribute contact information. Yeah, thank you. All right, so Rich, I'm actually going to um, Please do. hand it off to you. Rich oh, is no, I thought here. you were going to say skip me. No, no. <laughs> uh, no, come on, this is a really cool initiative. Um, it is. I'll, I'm not even going to intro it, please. Uh, I don't believe I have the PowerPoint, unless you guys made a PowerPoint for me. No? I wasn't that lucky. Okay. Uh, I'm going to sit, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, my name is Rich Wu. I'm on the board uh, here at VID. I'm also uh, very involved with uh, DTLA Strong, uh, which is number five on the agenda today. DTLA Strong is a, um, an independent group of uh, residents of downtown LA, of DTLA. Um, we live here. Um, we see what's going on here. There are a myriad of problems, issues, concerns that uh, most residents have, um, including us, obviously, and so we kind of banded together, um, formed um, uh, DTLA Strong. Uh, mostly, the, you know, at first, the, the, primarily the brainchild of um, Sarah Hernandez, um, Anthony, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. What Andrea just said, right? Um, and then Garen Taylor. Uh, I believe, right? Okay. Kel Kelsa? Kelsa's his real last name. Okay. Oh, uh, right. So I, I'm very Facebook -y. <laughs> So on Facebook, it's Garen Taylor. Um, <laughs> so Garen Kelsa is his uh, official. Make sure you get that in the notes. Yeah. Um, please don't tell him that I. Uh, so, so anyway, we're, we're uh, a group of uh, DTLA residents uh, who formed this advocacy, uh, advocacy uh, group. Um, obviously, as, as most people know, a myriad of problems. Uh, we have first. We have decided to first tackle um, public safety as our as our first issue. Um, we have put together a. Uh, this is this is a proposal that's gone through about seven, six or seven iterations um, so far, uh, and the proposal is to increase the frequency of foot patrols um, by LAPD. Uh, there, there's a, a whole page. This is my cheat sheet here. Um, and I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's a whole page. But in essence, uh, there are boundaries that we've decided. Obviously, a lot of it concentrates on uh, historic core. Uh, we've kind of uh, we've met with LAPD, uh, the captains, and we've uh, decided on uh, collaboratively uh, a sort of number for, for example, um, sufficient deployment for a 30-minute revisit rate per block. Um, we've designated uh, specific blocks. Um, what else? Increased presence in the community. There's a whole um, kind of rationale on why this would help or how this would help public safety in downtown, uh, community engagement. Um, and then lastly, because I know we have to be running short on time, right? Always. Always. Um, and lastly, uh, this Monday, November 5th, we're having a, can you actually pull up the website? Uh, this Monday, it's DPLA Strong. Um, this Monday, November 5th, we are having a uh, uh, kind of an update meeting. Everyone's welcome. Uh, it's right here in downtown. Uh, and if you scroll down, so this is our, so we just started, basically. Um, and I believe, how does this group differ? So it's, it's you know, four residents, by residents. Um, I think if you scroll up. Yes, thank you. So that is our next meeting. It's Monday at 7 um, at the 8th and Grand. It's the Whole Foods building in downtown. Again, uh, open to all, but please RSVP because we um, we have a certain limitation on, on space. Where in the building? Uh, it is on the it's either that, on might be, that might be helpful. second floor or uh, seventh floor. However, you check in with the front desk. And oh, okay. so, so it's going to be on the 7th or 2nd, depending on how many people RSVP. We have four, it says 14. 
and that's and that's it. Uh, any questions? Why did you launch uh, this website was launched about, about two months ago, but we're really and so we're starting a campaign in terms of the the foot beat patrol, the foot patrol um, by LAPD. We're starting. To, we're going to launch that campaign, social media, in person, door to door, um, on November fifth or or the night of November fifth. Um, kind of to coincide with Tuesday the 6th, uh, voting day. Um, and so the, the big launch, when most people will know that we exist, will be on November 6th. But we've been meeting uh, off and on for about two months now. I came into it sort of late. I was hoping Garen would actually show up and kind of present for me, but Halloween. So, <laughs> so the, the yeah. business yeah. improvement Every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The business Once improvement district uh, as an organization is not involved in this. Right. Um, we want our residents to know that this exists in case they would like to participate uh, at whatever capacity. Um, but you know, we are we are all for obviously increased security um, and improved security and public safety. That is our mission. Um, and so, and we obviously work very closely with LAPD and our footbeats and our slows. Uh, and so, when we learned about these LA jobs, we thought we would use this as a platform to introduce it to our Yeah, and thank you for giving us the, yeah. the time to, to get this out there. Great, so mark your calendars and follow them on Facebook. Uh, and ask Rich if you have any questions. Yeah, let me know. Great, thanks Rich. Thanks, Rich. Okay, moving on to item number six. Um, this is a presentation from Wallace. We have an exciting new communications initiative that we want to share with you. All right, um, so, and Wallace, most of you know me, uh, you've been hearing about South Park Stories, our blog, for a long time for me. We launched this in February 2017, and the goal was really that uh, we create a platform for the community to use to discuss things that are important to them, introduce themselves, introduce the issues that they think are important. Um, we've had um, some success in getting the community involved. Tom wrote a piece for us, Andrea's participated in a few, um, but as a whole, the things that have been most popular are things like these. Um, an interview with Faye Washington, a very long interview with a Canadian transit advocate, um, Ellen's piece on what we learned managing the transportation improvements, and so these are certainly uh, less fluffy than a lot of the posts that have done and also are the most time consuming. And so based on this, we've sort of identified that uh, this blog and this platform will be much more successful as an education tool than it is as more of a meet your neighbors uh, tool. And so because of that and because um, we are not experts on everything that people have questions about. Um, we're kind of going in a different direction with the way we use this to educate. And so um, going forward, we'll be using this as a way to share information from other sources about the issues that our stakeholders care about. So the things that we get asked about the most at community meetings, at events, right? Somebody's always coming up with transit questions. As you can see, uh, two of our top three posts were about transportation with homelessness questions questions about the development landscape as a whole and about schools and childcare and the infrastructure in downtown Los Angeles. And so um, we will be sharing information like from a educational standpoint about if these issues and others and the ways that our city and other cities are approaching solutions, um, which we're really excited about. And so we'll be doing this by approaching with an eight week series on each issue. So each week, a post will focus on a different aspect of that issue. A lot of these things are very complex, um, one article is not going to cut it, one post by me is not going to tell you what's going on. And so depending on what the issue is, these might include articles, resources for further learning, volunteer opportunities, and more. Um, and we're going to start with the thing we get asked about the most, homelessness. So we're going to be exploring who is homeless, who homeless people are, um, you know, the definition of homelessness, um, what that looks like for a person in Los Angeles and elsewhere, um, why people become homeless, why it's hard to get out of homelessness, um, housing issues, barriers to seeking services, mental illness, um, and more. And we're gonna be starting this next week. So this is just a draft example of what this is gonna look like. Um, we've got a really brief <coughs> intro, a link to an article, and a volunteer opportunity. This is less volunteer, it's a everyone in event next week, um, where there'll be stories from the front lines from home, people who've actually experienced homelessness in Boyle Heights. So, I'm really excited about this. Um, it's, we think it's a really good way to um, you know, provide some education on topics that we get questions about a lot um, without you know, becoming a full-time blogger. <laughs> 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 Does anyone have questions or anything to add on? 
Well, yes, one thing to add is, is that, as Wallace touched on, this is this could very easily become a full-time job for, for Wallace, and that is not the goal. So um, we ask that the community, if you come across articles or things you find interesting, send them our way. We will obviously vet them. Um, but if they're relevant, we will we will showcase them on Tell Press Stories and distribute them to our channel. So we appreciate in advance your I don't think it's a coincidence that our three most popular pieces were the three that took the most of my time. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. um, so, quick question, this is a drug example? Yeah. Is this a real event, or is this... Yes, that's oh, a real event. Cool. So, so um, we'll be getting, because I've heard of, we'll, I, you'll e-blast it, or...? Yeah, so okay. each one is going to come with an e-blast. Um, I'll send you this just so you have it in advance. Um, we'll be doing the blog post and then an e-blast each Wednesday with whatever uh, the piece is. So, um, I'm really excited about it. Huh? Um, it's in Boyle Heights. I can send you the info. Yeah, we'll start. This is going to happen next week. This is yeah. going to come out. So tomorrow, November, yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow when this is posted. Okay. So. <laughs> so it's but that's, yeah, one of, one of the reasons tomorrow. that we wanted to launch this is we get a lot of emails uh, asking how, how, I, how I can get involved, right? And yeah. so without, you know, curating daily all of the opportunities for volunteering, we thought this was a nice way to share some opportunities with the community. Great, thanks so much, Wallace. Um, okay, we're moving right along. Treasure update from Bob. Um, so fi financials are not on the agenda, but you all received them in your packets. Uh, and budget for 2019 but, yeah. is really what we want to have a conversation yeah. about. Okay. But we, we also can't vote today. I'm saying we can't vote, but we can So the budget, um, Ellen and I and Marcus Weaver from Milani are all Abedini. Okay. The uh, our our accounts worked on this budget, um, and um, we feel it's pretty it's 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 defensible. This is the budget that we will work with for 2019 at the next board meeting. No, it's, me, it's the board meeting, and we're going to start doing an 18 month projection. Six, six uh, months or then 18? Yeah, six months. So we'll do a six month projection to go from um, 2000 from. What's our calendar year? It's a calendar year, so we're. No, but I mean, I can't remember. I don't I can't remember what. July. So July we'll do. Out. July we will do six months. The first six months, the first two quarters of 2020. Then a year from now, then we will do six months after that. We will do an 18 month budget, which will be all of 2020 and the first six months of 2021. Trying to keep ahead and updating constantly. Uh, don't want to be caught with uh, assumptions that we make in November and then seven months later find out they were wrong. And not being able to adjust the budget, so we're going to keep as if this is a rolling exercise. Um, I think it'll it'll definitely help Ellen and staff to manage their budget, and it'll help all of us just keep track of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's that, that's it. Here's the budget. Um, I it it was um, Ellen put it together. So if you have specific questions, you can ask me, and I'll. Look at Ellen, <laughs> or you can just ask Ellen. Um, but the, the the thinking behind this budget, uh, Marcus and I both agreed with. So, so we tie. I mean, next year our uh, anticipated revenue is two point eight, um, and we have adjusted each bucket based on actual spending and last, uh, which you can compare against our financials included in your packets. We'd be happy to have conversations. Our, our budgets are really straightforward. Um, we're, very, we're very bound by our contract with the city. Yeah, the, the, the issue with our budget, more than anything, is managing the expense side. Uh, we're pretty confident that we know what the revenue side is going to be, and we know when the revenue is going to be, which is always helpful. Um, but it's balancing, balancing the expense side, and I think uh, that was a tremendous job. So, so at our next, uh, I 
mentioned this at the top of the meeting, but when we, when we do reconvene this year to vote, this will be a voting item. Yeah, it'll be a good one. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, so Channing is not here, unfortunately, she is sick, but item number <coughs> one, the secretary update. These items also are action items, which unfortunately we're not able to vote on, but I am particularly excited about uh, letter A. Um, as you all know, every year we open our uh, board up for nominations uh, for new members. And we received six applications this year. Um, in in uh, considering applicants, we the, the selection committee really focuses on two major things. One is the current makeup of the board. We would like for our board members to really represent our, our stakeholder groups, right? So um, that's number one. And number two is uh, participation in bid activities. Uh, all of our meetings are open to the public, and um, all of our events are open to the public. So. The, the philosophy here is, you know, if you want to be involved in the bid, you really can be involved in the bid, even if you're not a board member. Um, and so with those criteria in mind, and a few others, of course, um, we had one applicant that we're really excited to add to our slate, and that is Tom Trout. Um, Tom, if you want to just wave, stand up. Um, Tom has been, has been a, a resident of South Park for about two years now. And um, since, I mean, I think it was the first month that he moved here, he reached out he reached out to the bid and immediately asked how he could get involved. He's got a really awesome background in transportation planning. Um, and so he's provided already in the two years just really incredible insights um, and learnings uh, into our work with regards to transportation. Um, Tom and uh, his wife Deborah show up to everything, <laughs> every event, every um, board meeting, committee meeting, um, and we're really excited to welcome him or to put him on the slate uh, this year for, for 2019. So unfortunately, we're not able to vote you on today, Tom. Um, but is there a message to that? <laughs> <laughs> I would vote yeah, yes. Right? Would say yes. Um, but anyway, thank you for your for your applications, yeah. and thank you also to the other folks who did submit applications. We really we really do appreciate um, the the desire from the community to get involved, and uh, I really do hope that those who did apply and did not make it onto the board this year continue to stay involved. This is really what keeps the organization healthy and diverse and growing. So thanks, um, Tom. I will let you know when the next meeting is, where you will be. Uh, we will have this vote. Um, obviously, it's not a sure thing, but the slate is in the board packet, and if anybody has questions, please let me know. Uh, all right, B, 2019 public meeting schedule. This is um, administrative, is included. It's the same format as we always do every year. Um, so full board meetings are for Thursday of meeting months, and we still have the two committees, which will be meeting first Wednesday of meeting months for infrastructure planning, and the second Wednesday of odd months for interest identity. If anybody has any problems with that, please let me know, otherwise we will have that on the agenda uh, at our next <coughs> Alrighty, uh, let's see, number nine, committee reports. So I'm gonna pass it off to Josh, uh, who's gonna give an update on our working group for infrastructure planning. So our infrastructure working group, um, we've had several meetings so far. Uh, just to kind of recap, this was put together. There's been a number of um, infrastructure projects that we've talked about at the staff level um, for quite some time. BID obviously doesn't have money to, to fund most of those. Um, and so this group was really put together, trying to use some of the expertise um, of developers, land use consultants, um, et cetera, within our stakeholder group. Um, see if we can get some of these projects included as community benefits, either through development agreements, through some of the larger projects, or TPAR community benefit payments, QIMB fees, et cetera. So we've met a couple times where um, some of the big takeaways, a couple big takeaways really were, number one, we need to get involved much earlier in the process um, when these projects are being planned. Um, number two, we need to involve, be involved more with the city departments, uh, namely Rec and Parks and DOT. Um, and CD14, um, and especially as we develop our residential community and it starts to grow now with a lot of the new residential projects, um, that we really engage the residential community. Um, up until this point, we haven't had a lot of residents and they, 
outside of a few people who have been um, really active, that we haven't had a large group of people that have been active and kind of lobbying um, for some of these improvements. So those are sort of the big takeaways. Um, at our last meeting, um, our group looked at uh, some specific development projects. So these are things like mid-block crossings, uh, curb bump out, pedestrian lights, um, park and green space. We've got a list of about 10 um, specific projects. And the next couple of weeks, we're um, setting up meetings with staff from um, the city's rec and parks um, and DOT, really to try to vet these, pro these projects and say, okay, this is a specific project. Is this feasible? What do we need to do from a planning analysis study point of view to get these to the stage where they could be included in um, potential development agreements or community benefit um, agreements? We've sort of gone down this path before with a couple projects and we weren't really involved early enough um, and so they got kicked out at the end when, when CD14 was negotiating for various reasons. Um, so that's a big part of why we're trying to get this working group going. Thank you to Mac Real Estate and a couple of the other developers, Jim Pugh's been involved. Um, anyone in this room who, particularly if you have expertise in, in development or land use planning, or just know about that process with the city, please come to our meetings. Um, I'll be sending out notices when those meetings in the next couple of weeks are set up. Um, but we really rely on the expertise of our stakeholders to you know, help us understand where we can improve that process and make sure. The goal is really to get some of these projects that I think have wide support, but have kind of fallen through the cracks because we haven't had a good enough understanding and haven't been engaged enough early with the city. Um, we really want to get these projects done um, and they're not huge projects in the scope of things. Um, so that's kind of where we are. I don't know if there's any questions. Just a quick shout out to Dave Gordon. Oh yeah, Dave has been great too. Being really fantastic <laughs> and a great partner in those processes, so thank you. Um, Josh, I do want you to give a quick update on Monday's meeting with Metro. So this is related to Underground Eco Station, uh, which we've been working on. We had a great meeting on Monday with um, the staff, their staff. Um, they probably had like 15 to 20 uh, members of their staff, um, operations, engineering, uh, planning, real estate. We had some presentations, uh, Ted Tanner from um, AEG presented, uh, Lightstone presented their project, and we did a walking tour of the district. Really was try to, to let Metro staff understand the, the scope of the project or the scope of what's happening in South Park, the amount of development um, and really kind of get them on board um, further with trying to underground that station. It was a very good meeting. Um, what came out of that, basically at the staff level, was you know, they were very much in agreement, like this station is way too small, we need to do something big here. Um, I think they would like to do the undergrounding, it's really a matter of funding, um, but I think getting the staff um, on board is, is really important. So uh, going forward, we're looking to um, probably have a working group involving Metro, involving the city, the mayor's office, the council district, um, to try to push that forward. Um, the timeline is still, so Metro staff is uh, working on specific um, options, which will include a fully underground option for the station and the track uh, south of 10, along with some other options and probably be um, you know, some cheaper options along with that. That will come to the Metro board. Um, the goal was to get that to the Metro Board by the end of this year. I'm not sure that that's, um, they're gonna meet that timeline. But the overall goal is to get this done by the Olympics in 2028. Um, so that's kind of where we are. I feel much better about the process in the last six months or so. At the staff level, they've, um, there's been a lot more engagement. I think they've always sort of recognized the need, but um, you know, up until recently, haven't been quite as engaged as, as we probably are gonna need. Um, and I think at the staff level, we're, getting there so um, feel very good about that thank you to AG and our other partners who um, took time out to present and, and talk to them great okay. if this um, is the kind of thing that you like to hear about and be involved in our next infrastructure and planning meeting is uh, December 5th so why not please come to that if the more people with expertise that are engaged in the community the better that is yes so appreciate it Right, district identity and marketing. Um, Terry Tonys is the new chair, but she also is sick today, so I'm going to pass it off to Wallace. For that. All right, um, I'm going to be pretty quick about the wayfinding project. Um, you all have heard about this from me for months. We're really excited about it. We are finally nearing the end. Katie is meeting with LADOT today to finalize our like. 
permit is something called a notice to proceed. So Katie's meeting with them at one o'clock today. Um, and after that, hopefully we'll have like a clear answer on when we actually have permission from the city to go ahead and wrap these boxes. We are at the very end of the design phase. They've matched artwork um, <coughs> to every single box. Um, we're just finalizing some of the math details. This has been at every turn more complicated than I or our design team anticipated. Um, but they're looking amazing. Um, I can show them. If so one example is really beautiful. Yeah, um, they are amazing. They like, you know, like the one next to Hotel Figueroa has a fig plant on it. Everything on flower is a flower. This box is outside the palm, so they showed the palm tree. Um, they were very clever with the way they matched the artwork to uh, the location. They asked me if I wanted to change it. Why would I? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was sent to me before we made some decisions about the map. So they're not going to look as crazy as that one on the right does. Um, but really, just like unbelievably pleased with how these are turning out. We've had um, comments from several other bids that they want, you know, to know who designed them and what the timeline is and what it cost and how we did it. So um, it would be great if these were a template all over downtown. Uh, by the way, we worked with Rios Comenti Hill, who's um, who's a design work for Asian Park, and they've just been incredible oh, partners. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And they've been in South Park for so long, they really got a read on the community very quickly, um, which was invaluable for us. We sort of went with, we want to do this, and we don't know what it looks like, and they just took it from there and showed us exactly what we wanted. Um, we did Parking Day on the 21st of September, which is a uh, unofficial urbanist holiday where people all over the world set up um, small parks and parking spaces. It was the first time we participated. There are a few other bids in the city of Los Angeles who participated as well. Um, it was really successful. We had 46 people who walked by and interacted with me or the space in some way, and I counted those as positive, negative, and neutral. Um, I had one neutral interaction, no negatives, and 45 positives. Um, and that ranged from people who were like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, cool. To uh, people who like sat and hung out. Um, we had a few people who popped by for 45 minutes or so they saw it on Instagram and wanted to talk about the development landscape and things like that. So it was really fun. Um, Going forward, we'd like to keep doing this. Uh, there was a lot of um, interaction from other business improvement districts who uh, were excited about the possibility of expanding this um, into kind of an LA-wide thing in the future. Um, we're also using it uh, as kind of the beginning of community outreach on a second park list, so that's really exciting. Um, which leads me to my 2019 committee priorities. Both of these projects came out of priorities that were identified by the District Identity and Marketing Committee at the beginning of last year. And so at our next meeting on November 14th, we're gonna be choosing our priorities for the coming year. It's very likely that those will include um, more public space activations. Um, we'll be tackling the second permanent parklet and then we'd like to do um, consider an alley activation like we did last year. Um, it came up last year, we just couldn't identify the right alley. So. Uh, it's likely that we'll be taking up both of those things and then considering some more branding and marketing based things as we prepare for um, a much larger and more populous district. So we'll be looking at um, kind of a light rebrand and a website refresh and making sure that we have, um, you know, the tools we need to really tell a story about the district as our population people. So if you want to be involved in that, I'm really excited about it. We have a really good time at the District Identity Committee. Um, please come on the 14th. It's fun. It is. <laughs> I, got, I got to say, congrats. I mean, love the wayfinding, uh, how it turned out. I know it says timeline. I missed the timeline. Um, when, well, uh, really, approximately? So I think that we have less than a week before we can start printing. Um, but that is entirely dependent on what Katie learned from LADOT today. Um, so we are, yeah, so we're working. There aren't really like LADOT rules about how this happens. They have a list of like things that aren't allowed on the box. Um, and from there, it's basically um, kind of, it's, it's an unofficial program intentionally because they need to be able to take the uh, take them off or remove utility boxes without having to go through the mural ordinance and all of those things. So um, there's a lot of room for kind of interpretation. Um, DOT has been great so far. I feel good about it. Yeah. So yeah, like positive a attitude. couple of <laughs> couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, I, yeah I think that we will be, um, so once we get that notice we receive from the city and we get final, um, like, actual, like, full resolution documents from Rios, uh, it's only going to take CRNA about three days to print and install. Um, so they're pretty amazing. Um, and we're working with them on a really exact timeline. So we can say, like, 
the box in front of Papa Palm is being installed at 10 a.m. The box like one block down 11 is being installed at 10:30 a.m. So the CD14's graffiti abatement team can follow them with their graffiti coatings and make sure nothing oh, is uh, uncoated for any amount of time. Right, um, right. So uh, I'll send out an update on something that we have yeah. the notice to proceed in a better timeline by today. But I'll send out an update as yeah, soon as we do. Thank you. And, and one last thing, are we officially calling it Aiden Park now? Or? No, um, I don't believe they've decided. It's fine, it's fine. Maybe, yeah. Uh, really like no, to have they're it correct on my wayfinding boxes. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're looking for names. They're still in the decision okay. making process. So okay. if you have great ideas, I'm happy to pass them on. I'm, I'm fine with Aiden Park. <laughs> okay, let's, let's keep it going. Um, so my update is on our office relocation. Um, I wanted to just show everyone exactly where we've been talking about this for a very long time. Uh, <laughs> it's been it's been a ride, let me tell you. Um, but we have signed a lease at 1150 South Hope. It, this unit here, this is Aladdin, this is Hope Street here, this is Hope Street, your local Um So our unit, the line here, like right here, goes to the end of the building. Um, it's about 6,000 square feet. And um, 2,600 of that will be for the front of the house, and then the back of the house will be for operations. I think you go to the next slide. Uh, and again, next slide. Okay, so this is the layout for interior. <laughs> back of the house will be clean and safe operations. Um, and then this is our front of the house. We're starting, I'm happy to say that we're starting construction, we started yesterday um, on the TIs. So thank you all, especially Jeff. Is it off the post? Yeah. Okay. And it's also back in. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned. Um, we're working with Howard CBM on those TIs. They've been um, so far so good. Uh, and our timeline for move in is mid December. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, four years with two five year options. Alrighty, uh, last item is our clean and safe vendor bids. Um, so, as you all know, we went out to bid for our clean and safe uh, operations this year for the first time in at least six years. Um, we currently contract with Street Plus and LA Conservation Corps, um, who've been really great partners, but for the health of the organization, it's always good to know what else is out there and keep it competitive. Um, we had a selection committee, and I want to thank those selection committee members, uh, Robin, Bob, and Dell, who is Paul's proxy from Mac Real Estate, um, and myself. We received, uh, we put out an RFP and gave uh, potential applicants uh, 60 days to submit an application. We received seven applications. Were you surprised that <coughs> Uh, no, because I did outreach. Um, I was, I pretty much knew who we were going to get applications from. Um, from those seven, we kind of whittled it down to five and asked five different companies, slash organizations, to come in for interviews. We conducted those interviews. I think, what is it, three weeks ago now? Yeah. Um, did our reference checks, obviously. Uh, these, these applications are, you know, 150 pages long, so we have some. Uh, long nights, but it, it it was fascinating to see sort of the various um, responses to our our calls for service, right? And after hours of conversation, hours of interviews, we set up a pretty rigorous uh, process. Um, actually, Wallace, with you, Ryan, going back to the rubric, I shared this in the board packet. So, but if you haven't had a chance. To look at it, we created, I created a, a rubric um, to help us assess uh, each of the applicants, um, trying to keep it as data driven as possible, but really what it comes down to is that conversation in the room and, and how, and the reference checks, of course. And so from all of that, the, the selection committee is recommending to the full board that we move forward with um, a contract with block by block for both clean and safe. Um, and this is really for a number of reasons, but primarily I think that is what, what was most appealing to me about their application um, and the conversation that we've had with them um, is 
housing both clean and safe under the same roof and having one point of contact for me. Um, South Park bid staff does not have an operations, a full-time operations director that a lot of um, other bids do, and that is my is part of my responsibilities. And uh, having one person who oversees both teams is, is quite appealing to me. Um, there were a number of different factors that went into this decision-making process, uh, but but really, I think the committee was unanimous in. Um, Finding block by block proposal the most compelling, and we really think that what they can bring to the table is what our district is going to do going forward. Um, I do want to say that in that it was not an easy decision. Um, we have really valued the partnerships that we've had with Conservation Corps, which is a really fantastic organization, mission driven, local. Victor's a member of our family, um, as is the Conservation Corps. The rest of the Conservation Corps team. Um, and Street Plus as well has been a really, uh, you know, pioneering um, uh, partner since we since we were founded. Um, and so that it definitely made this decision very difficult. Um, but the recommendation from the selecting committee is to move forward with the contract to go block by block. Um, I'm happy to answer questions or turn it over to other members of the committee. Um, if you guys have any comments you want to add. Okay. Questions from board members or uh, participants in the, in the audience? Okay, so obviously we're not going to be voting on this um, today, but board members, <coughs> that is the recommendation. So when we do reconvene to vote, heads up. Do we have just like a 30 day cancellation? Yeah. 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 yeah, without cost. Yeah, yeah. 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 we yeah. can and get out of them. To your contract. I'll share the draft version of the contract as well if you yeah. are interested. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> Anybody who <laughs> wants what? to join. You don't want to read the contract? Please read it. A shot. Well, it's it's like the brain brain brain. Brain. Yeah, I'm sure. So thank you. On that, to that note, thank you very much for, to my selection committee because I really, really, this was a team effort and it was a lot of hours and some hard conversations and uh, I think that this is really the best move forward for the district. All right, so that brings us to um, upcoming events and meetings. Uh, we already talked about our committee meetings. Uh, we do have a green carpet event on the 15th of this month. Uh, first draft, which is already open and uh, is really beautiful and we really hope that they do very well. They are. Um, <laughs> they are in Wren, uh, and so if you haven't stopped by, you, you should. It's, um, the team is awesome, and their their menu is great, and their environment is really fun. So um, go check that out, or and or join us for the green carpet event on the 15th. Yes, come on the 15th. Um, the other thing I want to point out is CD14. I'm surprised Katie didn't mention it, but they are. Uh, organizing what they're calling a team up to clean up, a uh, meeting in Pershing Square on the 17th. Uh, <coughs> this is really for residents of downtown if anybody's interested in getting involved and in rolling up their sleeves and helping to clean up downtown, you're all welcome to go. Um, and lastly, our annual meeting is December 6th. Board members have this in your calendars already. Uh, but the LA Auto Show is generously hosting us, um, and they're also opening up their the floor, the show floor um, of the conference uh, for attendees of the annual meeting. So if you wanna go and have sort of an inside scoop before the, the uh, event actually starts, you should join us, it should be fun. Um, that is it for me. Any last comments from board members? I will be circulating right after this meeting um, concludes, I will be circulating do have to vote on some pretty important items before we move forward. Um, yes, Paul. Can I just ask one thing? Yes. I mean, I know that everyone is incredibly frustrated with Caltrans. And <laughs> <laughs> Underpasses? Yeah. 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 No. But it's me, Bombay. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm but glad Sorry, you... Bombay. Yeah, but, you know, everyone that comes here every day, like so many of us, the, the experience getting off at Grand and coming up all of is just so
so uh, <coughs> depressing and and it and it's getting worse. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. The trash now is piled up to the top of the curb on both sides, and you immediately cross the street, and it's like you're not in Bombay. But unfortunately, the light causes you to be in Bombay if it's red. And you know, so many guests yeah. to the CBD come have got to come through Bombay. <laughs> Calcutta's here on the way. So I'm here to just yeah. put the bull by the horns. So here's what we have been doing, uh, and I'll give you an update. It's not on the agenda because it kind of had, it was for a very long time, and we're slowly making progress, I think. What we are doing is compiling, so, so technically those are outside of the bid boundaries, which means that we cannot deploy services to, to help and assist in creating data. That's number one. Number two is, so, so, our, so our levers are a little bit um, removed, right? What we have done is collected photos of all of the, um, the trash, the debris, the stuff that's in lanes of traffic, the completely um, untraversable sidewalks, you know, how we all have seen uh, the underpasses. And we, along with other BIDs who have underpasses in downtown, have compiled them shared folder and have been kind of spreading those around. CCA now has access to them. We've been working very closely with um, council offices, both 9 and 14. Um, we will be, we're setting up a meeting with um, Assembly Member Santiago's office to help with this. I was at a meeting, a CCA luncheon with him and asked him and kind of everyone, you know, what can you do to help us? Because this is, this comes down to jurisdiction. Right? It's Caltrans, but it's also DOT and it's DSS, which means that all of those different entities are saying, not my problem, and it just grows and grows and grows. And so uh, we are trying to facilitate more regular cleanups. Right now, we have these one-offs where we say, guys, it's getting really bad, and people have to step off the sidewalk and into traffic where they're getting hit by vehicles. This happens all the time, and we are documenting all of those, but really trying to <laughs> elevate this to a person who does have decision making power and can help us work with Caltrans um, and we hope that that's Santiago's office. I know that CCA is working with Bloom on this as well so we will be joining forces and getting a more regular program in for, for cleanup enforcement and really it's not even just cleanup it's pitch black under there right so like we need to have lights installed we need to make that a, a welcoming entrance to downtown as opposed to a scary tunnel where, you know, you don't know if you're going to hit somebody or, you know, it's, you can't walk it. It's, it's, it's not okay. So I, I will say that I wish that we could have a hard and fast, you know, button to push and it would make this situation go away. But we don't have that kind of leverage or authority, so we have to play the piece. Facilitator, documenter, role. Unless so, you have someone, other suggestions. So I, I still, I mean, I appreciate everything you're saying, and it's all correct, and it's all very thoughtful and logical. But what I don't understand is if we sent our crew across the street who did nothing more than clean the trash in the street, not on the sidewalk, in the street. Would like you be thrown in jail or what would happen? <laughs> uh, we would be, it'd be an add on, it'd be an add -on be, expense to the contract. No, we cannot do it. We, we cannot, cannot do, do it. it. By law, we are not allowed to operate our services outside of the business improvement district boundaries. And those are very clearly delineated on a street basis, side of the street basis. I know exactly where our boundaries are and any action. Did you get yeah, I mean, we would we could get sued. We would we would get sued, and uh, safety for us. It's not. Yeah, we cannot. Are we talking about the Ninth Street into Grand going on? No, all of them. It's when you come down Grand. Ninth Street is all in. Yeah, Ninth Street, Ninth Street, all in Grand. All in Grand. And I'm talking about Olympic. 
Right, right. right. You said Calcutta right. and Bombay. Bombay. Yeah, well, Calcutta is Ninth Street. Bombay is or well, vice versa. Right. It's, 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 it's their form. Okay. okay. It's, it's, it's got my city. Yeah. Okay. It's awful. <clears throat> Okay. It's getting, I hear it's getting you. worse. It's getting oh, worse. it's definitely getting worse. It's definitely getting worse. And so all three three agencies have some jurisdictional authority over that area, over that stretch of street. Over um, underpasses. Over underpasses. Over underpasses, yeah. The world of miracle and wonder. Sure is. So I, I can keep you personally sort of no, up I, to speed on how this is going, it's but it's, it's not an easy Does this process. require depressing tone? Particularly, it's frustrating when you have elected officials who um, are are champions of downtown and really, as they should be, and really espouse all of the positive things that are happening down here, and neglect the the doorways, you know. And those are really, if we can't make folks feel like they are safe and welcome when they come into downtown, then I think that we're missing a pretty key. Is any part of the city But I don't think that's CD14, I think that's CD9. Is that current right? The underpasses under the 10 are CD14, the underpasses under the 110 are CD9. And CD14 and CD1. So that's the other thing. It's so not yes, just it council. But to answer your question, yeah. The team, of, I love where, the way that you're thinking, and yes, that seems like the logical thing. I don't think that that is. Maybe not as long as but it's part of the conversation. Yes. Yeah. Any other um, items that folks want to discuss? Thank you all for being here. I am very sorry that we were not able to vote on these items. Billy, thanks for Billy Greer. By the way, is um, Terry Rubenwright's proxy, and we're really lucky to have her here. She's a force. Um, really awesome. <laughs> okay, let's call this. <laughs>